We're at Notion. It is the Stockport County shirt collection. And tonight we have with us a proper Stockport County hero. He's someone who drove us to our first league title in 52 years and won Players Player of the Season in 2018-19. He's somebody out of all the players in recent memory has got what it meant to play for County more than anybody else. Ladies and gentlemen, Sam Walker. Yeah, good, thank you. Yeah, not too bad. Good, glad to hear it. So what we're going to do is we've got a selection of county shirts, shirts from your career, and we're going to run through these now, starting from the early days right through to your current shirt we've got at Farsley now. Mm -hmm. First of all, um, were you always going to be a footballer? I wanted to be. Yeah? Yeah, I know that much. Um, Who's your team? Don't boo. United. <laughs> <laughs> United, yeah. <laughs> no, at least not it's not safe. What's yeah. your first memories of County? The West Ham one. 1996. It, yep. 97. It was. So yeah, that, that was the, the shirt. shirt. We wore. Yeah. That season, League Cup semi-finals, promotion up yeah. to what is now the Championship, and that was won by Chris Marsden. I remember Marsden. Obviously, he um, he got his move to Southampton later, yeah. didn't he? He was a player. He was. Yeah, he could spray it about. Yeah, I bought this one along. I don't know if you recognise this at all. I recognise it. Yeah. yeah. So I've brought this along just to kind of show off, really. Um, so I'm talking about the League Cup. Um, we wore this once at Blackburn in the third round. It's known as the Romania shirt. Um, only ever wore it once. Probably the most sought after county shirt of all time. Um, but that was worn by Jim Gannon. Right. We'll touch upon Jim yeah, yeah. a little bit later on. But I assume someone who's probably fairly um, had an influence on you in your career. Yeah, definitely. So going a little bit further down the line, you mentioned the game you went to with a mate of yours. Yeah, Adam Lafondre. It was around Christmas time, yeah. something like that. It was away at Bradford. Um, and I remember him playing there, yeah. I'd gone to the game to watch. It was when they still used to have the away end over the uh, top of the goal open. Yeah. Uh, I remember the seats being in there, um, the atmosphere that day. I, I think I remember Apple Singh, was it? Apple Singh was He, he was playing. <laughs> Yeah. Um, there was another lad who made his debut for County that day. Um, see if anyone remembers. Big French centre half, come striker. Who was it? Oh, yeah. Ludovic Jay. Oh, yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah centre half, yeah, yeah. striker. Never yeah. scored. Only completed the game. <laughs> <laughs> Only completed the game for us three times. Um, Go on, Ludo. I ended up getting picked up and asked to go to Woodley Sports. And that was my first step into non-league. Okay. So what year was what kind of season was this? Uh, I'm not too sure uh, what what year it would have been. Early 2010s, kind of that. Yeah, yeah around there, something yeah. like that. So Maybe a little bit before. Won, yeah, probably. yeah, yeah. Um, I think there was a few county players that are still there now that wore that shirt. Your Liam Ogans, your Anthony Sarsaviches. Yeah, of course. We were in the same team. Going further back, Liam Dickinson. Dicko was there yeah. just before I got there. So then from Woodley, where did we go after that? So Woodley it was to Curzon Ashton. Yeah, big success at Curzon. Yeah, we had four, well I had four years there. Um, the assistant manager at Woodley at the time was John Flanagan. He got the job at Curzon and then he ran me the next morning and he just said, would you be interested in coming? Uh, I'd like to make you and Christian Dennis my first signings. Um, so yeah, we went there and then four really good, successful years, loads of trophies, collectively, individually. Two promotions. Two promotions, yeah, a few cup finals in there. So that takes us for, up to about 2015, mm -hmm. get Curzon Ashton into what was the Vanarama North. Yeah. But then you get the offer of a move over to Halifax. Yeah. We were, national, we were a conference at the time. Yeah. National League team at the time. Yeah, they were. Yeah. <laughs> Bit of a mixed season for Halifax. So yeah, very much so. Ended up 
going down. Yeah. Just, but Wembley appearance against Grimsby in the trophy. Yeah, it was. It was. Um, yeah, they ended up buying me from Curzon. I mean, it didn't really go to plan in in that respect. But I suppose the the, the light out of that was going to Wembley and being, beating Grimsby in the trophy. Yeah. And you came on in that game, didn't you? I did. I'd, yeah. I'd been out since. Easter, I'd, I'd done uh, the ligaments in my knee, and it kind of looked like it was, yeah, we weren't going to be fit. But to be fair, I worked solid for a month, and I was it was touch and go whether I was going to start the game mm. at Wembley. But I just don't think I had enough football behind me that would have made me last the 90 minutes. But ended up coming on with about half an hour to go, contributed. I think I saved one off the line. Um, when the backs are against the wall, but but yeah, great day, loads of memories. So end of 15-16, then there's a at Conference North level, there's a kind of a, a new boy in town, mm -hmm. Salford. Yeah. So, mm. <laughs> so this is Salford from 2016-17, how did the move to Salford come about? Um, well, before I'd gone to Halifax, I'd spoke to I spoke to Salford, Halifax, and funnily enough, I spoke to County. I think Neil Young was the manager at the time. John and Bernard really wanted to sign me at Salford. It was closer to home, all the rest of it. Um, and then the clubs managed to do a deal. What's the expectation? Because we remember being at level, seeing Salford come up. There was a lot of noise about them, you know, mm -hmm. they're throwing money about, they're going to go for the title, they want to be in the Football League. I think they even said they want to be in the Premier League at one point. Was the expectation when you joined Salford promotion? Yeah. Was it? Yeah, top and bottom promotion. Yeah. That was that, that was the the makeup. What they wanted to do every year, they wanted to get promoted. And how much input did the names have? So the likes of Neville and Bot, were they day to day involved, or were they just these distant kind of boardroom figures? No, they kept the distance. I'd probably say um, Gary. Obviously, he was involved obviously wanted to know a lot that was going on. He was he was very present at the games. I had a meeting with Phil Neville before I'd signed. Um, the day that we were playing in the playoffs, he came in to see us all. But I have to say, Phil Neville, absolutely spot on. Yeah. What a lovely bloke. Um, just felt like he had a really good nature about him, wanted the team to do well, no pressure on us yeah. type of thing. And, and it was a bit of a pressure cooker, the investment, the names that are involved. But I remember whenever I bump into him, he kind of took that weight away from you. So that season we played you, well, you being Salford, mm -hmm. we played you three times. Mm -hmm. We beat you in the first round of the cup, mm -hmm. the week after we beat you in the league. Um, and then we drew, <laughs> sorry. No, then, no. Then we drew it, um, at your place later on. Um, and I assume that was the first time you played County in a, in a senior game. Yeah. It? yeah, yeah, it was. And that's been your local team. Did, did that have any kind of more kind of weight to it, or was it just another game for you? No, it did definitely had a little bit of weight because you watch sure what you're about. I remember that first game that we played that you were talking about. I think they were pretty close, weren't they? The yeah, FA Cup game, weeks. yeah. yeah. Um, and I remember just thinking on the first game, didn't really give a good account of myself. Um, but then again, that's probably credit to County, the way that yeah. they played. And another one at Neighbour just thought of, who actually scored in the second game, Gary Stockforth. Yeah. He was ex-Salford, wasn't he? He was, Gaz, yeah. And then he yeah. scored and then was giving it the big one when he, he opened the score and as he tended to do. Who, Gaz? Yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, sounds about right. So the end of 2016-17, County miss out on the playoffs, we draw the final day. Salford, your team, and your old team, Halifax, meet in the playoff semi finals. Mm -hmm. um, two draws, it goes to penalty shootout. Mm -hmm. I'll let you take it from there. I skied it over the bar. <laughs> uh, and that was your last kick in a Salford shirt, wasn't it? Yeah, it was. Yeah. Um, yeah, a little bit gutted that it was. Yeah. Because I was a penalty taker for, for Salford. Um, you know, pretty reliable when it came to penalty kicks. Um, yeah, it's just one of those, don't put too much stock into it, just one of those that weren't going to be our day. So then I just took it upon myself to um, speak to Dave Conlon, see if the gaffer was still interested. Um, thankfully for me he was, um, and yeah, I sorted out 
everything that I needed to with Salford and then we managed to get the deal done with County. This is the shirt you make your debut in. Mm -hmm. Pretty unforgettable shirt. Yeah. Where does that rank in your all-time county shirts? Lowest. Lowest. <laughs> yeah. That high. Yeah. yeah. What's yeah. your memories of that day? I came on as substitute, obviously. Yeah. I was brought off as a substitute. Not ideal. No, far from it. But that's football sometimes. Yeah. We got to a point where it was we need to push on and get a goal. So where's the goal coming from, or who's not going to get a goal? Yeah. And then I was sacrificed, so yeah, um, yeah, I'd want to forget. Yeah, we'll move on. We'll move on. From okay. That. So, home shirt from that season. Yeah. So you make your county debut. You know, we go on to beat Curzon three 0 mm -hmm. We draw with Harrogate two two, um, and then we go and beat Southport six 0 um, So it's a reasonably strong start to the season. A little bit inconsistent, but reasonably strong start to the season. You become a regular player. You're kind of a core part of the county team, a couple of sub-appearances, mm -hmm. but a core part of that county team. And we seem to be making some progress mm -hmm. in that part of the season. With the calibre of player that we did have at the time, your Jason Oswells, your Warbies, um, Jimmy Ball had hit the ground running, he was doing really well. Um, obviously we've got Ben in net, who's brilliant. You know, you're looking around the pitch and you're looking at people in the dressing room and you're thinking, yeah, we've got a bit here. We can do, and especially when you start comparing yourself then to to other teams in the league, and you definitely have confidence in, in what you've got in your dressing room, and you understand as well that we've got a manager that probably shouldn't be managing at that level, and he's probably a lot better yeah. than anything else that's in the league. Okay. So then, the, the, so well, the away shirt from that season is black and white. We wear this in a four-one win at home to FC United. Memorable for us, a wearing this shirt but also for Ken Boxall playing Scatman John in the middle of last post on the bugle. Ken's a bit of a club legend. Yeah. He's been there forever, he does the job for free. Mm -hmm. Do you have anything to do with Ken? Do you have... Not really. Um, obviously, everybody knows that he's a legend. When you're coming out, you're hearing him. I mean, he's synonymous with the club when you hear uh, his, uh, his voice. I first got to shake his hand when he was introducing the players onto the pitch for the Champions Parade. Yeah. That was the first time that I'd got to really shake his hand and yeah, he's just... He's got some handshake, haven't he? Yeah, he's to be fair, he's still recovering now, to be fair. <laughs> yeah. But no, um, stand-up guy, yeah. lovely fella. Managed to chat with him for a little bit after. Um, but yeah, what a job he does as well. Exactly, and we say this a lot, that you know, County is, particularly over the last few years, has become very kind of transient. Edgley Park is a constant for County fans, mm. and part of Edgley Park is Ken's voice. Yeah. The day that Ken retires, or hopefully never gets pushed out, is a day probably the biggest consistent in most people in this room's County lives is gone. Yeah. It's Ken's voice, and yeah. we need to hang on to that. And the day he gets replaced by some Match day experience whopper mm -mm. is a, is a bad day. <laughs> yeah, bad day. it can't be replaced. No, <laughs> never. So just after this FC game, mm -hmm. um, you go back to Curzon mm -hmm. for all but one game. You come back for the playoff game. Um, how did things go for Curzon? I think it was one for me personally. It was Curzon was was the best place for me to be to to thrive. They knew what I was about. They knew how I work. Um, and they knew that they're going to get a player that's going to help them. Yeah. And then in return, Stockport are going to get a better version of me. And I'd like to think that's what they got. Yeah. Well, you know, the proof is you came back. I mean, you came back for the Chorley playoff game mm -hmm. on the bench, um, which was a bit of a non event for County. Yeah. As playoff games go, you know, we, we didn't show up. Um, Chorley did very well, got the goal, and they do what they did and kind of shut us out. That's it. We move into. 2018 19. Um, obviously, we all know what happened with that season. We go and win the league at last. And this is the home shirt from that season. And you get your first county goal after probably being a year at the club um, on the Tuesday night against Guys. Funnily enough, we've gone through the set pieces as we always did during the week with a gaffer. Um, and everybody knows Jim the way that he looks at the game and it, he looks to exploit any type of weakness. And I remember him saying to me about just when you, if you get a free kick on the edge of the box, just try and have a look at if there's any kind of 
holes in the wall or areas that you can exploit that the keeper's going to struggle with. Would have got blocked now with someone lying down behind the wall, wouldn't it? Yeah, probably. Yeah. I don't know what all that's about, the to be fair. The draft excluded as John Kieran calls it. <laughs> yeah. yeah. And normally, my mum and dad come to every game, and they weren't there for that. And I think the season that, that had gone before, it was one of those that it meant a lot, yeah. yeah. I remember just pointing up at the seats where they normally think, normally sit. Nobody's there. <laughs> Nobody's sat in the yeah. seats. But to me, it was just like one of them for, <laughs> for them. Yeah, it was. Yeah. And I think you could see by the celebration that I did. I, um, yeah, it meant a lot, that one. Moving through that season, we um, FA Cup, early round away at South Shields. We yeah. get another goal, and it's the start of a, well, it kind of kick-starts the season. Um, you know, great success in the FA Cup, the FA Trophy. Um, so yeah, good success there. And then going further on to that, we get to Barnet in the second round, where this year we take two and a half thousand county fans down on a Sunday afternoon. Mm -hmm. Probably the biggest away following at that point you'd seen for county. It was brilliant because pulled in, on the bus, obviously we'd stayed the night before and you'd just seen all the county fans scattered about. Yeah. I remember Bully just getting us all together after we'd finished the warm up and he just, let's just do a lap for it, in front of the fans. All you lot just went mad yeah. and it kind of, we get into the dressing room then and if you're not fired up by that then you shouldn't be playing. How difference does that make? If we go to Barney on a Sunday and there's 200 of us there, compared to 2,000. What difference does that make in the changing room to the players and when you're out on the pitch? It's a lot because, say if there's 200 there, there's not that much pressure on, is there? You know, 2,000, two 2,500. Thinking, all these fans have paid good money to come and watch you play. And not just play, put in a performance. Yeah. And I think that's, that's where it, the difference is. Who were the big voices in that changing room? I imagine there's some big competing voices. Who were the kind of the real, you know, the leaders in there? It wasn't really like that. There wasn't any loud voices, no screaming and shouting or anything like that. It was very much just a word here, a word there. Um, and yeah, the, the, the bond that we had, that's all we needed. It was just a little word here and there. Or, yeah, yeah it wasn't a lot. There was no screaming and shouting. And like I said, the gaffer kind of spearheaded everything. We feel like it's important to to make sure we we stay in contact, we check in on each other. Um, yeah, I mean, funnily enough, I had to see Lando uh, down at the training ground, and Ash comes walking out, and I've not seen him for a little bit, even though we talk on text all the time, and it's just the same as it, uh, that it's ever been. And I think it's rare. It is rare because the amount of pretenders, the wannabes that you find in football, it's hard to find a really true group that aren't just about the individual, they're more about everything that's going on and I think that was the beauty of that team. Nobody cared about who got the plaudits or anything like that. Yeah. It was, are we doing our job, are we doing it well, are we winning games? Right, okay, let's keep going. Sam played 101 games for County and he played alongside one player in 98 of those games, which was Ben Hinchliffe. So the other side of that coin, I said Ben is the player you've played with the most, mm -hmm. which in a competitive first team game, who's the player you spent the least time on the pitch with? Yeah. No. It was 34 minutes. In, the, in one game? In one game. And you only ever made one appearance for us? One Gilchrist. It was Gilchrist. Was it? Yeah. Was it? Gilchrist. Yeah. Oh. Came on against Darlington. And he, made, he had a one-on-one. -on -one. That's right, yeah. He missed it. Yeah. 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 <laughs> missed it. And then we never saw him again. No. <laughs> so, a couple of standout games, certainly for the fans. We talked about this year, obviously we'll come to another in a minute, but we won 6-0 away, you missed twice, mm -hmm. at Ashton and Chester. But one of the other games that stands out as well in this year was the Boston game. Yeah. When we go top of the league, Frank Mulhern being, doing Frank Mulhern things. Yeah. What are your kind of stats, other than Nuneaton, which, you know, again, we'll come to, what are your favourite games or goals or anything from that season that really stand out, or moments of skill or anything that stand out? One that stands out for me in that shirt, up at Spennymoor Tuesday night. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Well, to be fair, I think the keeper did me a solid one with that. <laughs> but, um, we won't talk about the last five minutes. No, we can do, because <laughs> that, were, that were the other end of it. It's 2-1, and then I get sent off yeah. as well. Was that, was that second yellow for a tackle or for a dive? 
I couldn't even tell you to this day because all I know is that I was out for two weeks on the end of that tackle that the lad put on me and I got sent off for it. In the March, we play them back at Edgley Park and that is a proper game. Mm. County Beast, but Chorley are still up there. We're closing the gap on them. Spennymore are closing the gap. They've got the games in hand. It's the biggest ever attendance in the Conference North that game and it is a genuinely big, big game. I remember going out, walking out the tunnel, hearing the noise. I think the build up through the week as well. As it does, you just realise it's a big game and we need to win it. Um, and it was pretty, it was quite cagey. There, there wasn't a lot in the game um, between the two teams. And for me, it just came down to, to one kick really that, that separated us. Was it shot? No. 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 <laughs> no. Will you just kind of drop it in that area and see what happens? <laughs> I've scored three kicks like that before in terms of putting it in a good area. And if the bounce is right, it can take the keeper, it can catch the keeper off guard or anything like that. Um, to be fair, I've put it right in an area where Stott is walking onto it, he's running into the box and he's just, it looks like it's going to be, he'll probably just stick it in yeah. bottom corner, but the light just gives him a bump at the last minute. Keeper's probably expecting the same thing. Uh, and luckily for me, it takes a sweet bounce goes in the net and then I just see the cheetle and go up. Yeah. So, you know, the, the following game we go with at Boston, we go top of the league, we then slip back at Brackley. Bit of inconsistent form which leads us in to what at the time seems like a shootout. A one-off, winner takes all, 20th of April away at Chorley. We talked about the Spennymore game being just near three points. What was that like? Because that wasn't, you couldn't play that down as it's just one more game. No. That wasn't where it takes off. Yeah, it was. Um, everybody looking at that fixture knew the same thing as well. And it was it was just one of those. I mean, we spoke about previously in the playoffs, Charlie, they do what they do. Yeah. Very hard to play against, especially when they were playing with the three centre backs. <clears throat> I remember coming to that time of the season, the gaffer was cute in terms of the way that he'd move me, Keanu and Bully around and keep freshening us up. Regardless of how anyone played, he'd stuck to his guns and it worked for us. And I remember it was my time to be on the bench for that game. And I'm thinking to myself, oh, no, I can't. It means I can't yeah. miss this game. And I remember normally the setup, the training session before the game at the weekend, Dave will give the bibs out to the team that aren't most likely going to start. And I remember him kind of like chasing me a little bit around the thing. I said, fuck it, <laughs> keep that bib away from me, I don't want it. Um, but no, um, Bully and Keno started that game. Um, and then for me, it took on a different meaning because then I have to be the best teammate that I can yeah. to get the lads over the line. Talking about being the role of the teammate, then we spoke about already, Matty Warburton, yeah. he, you know, he did so well for us that season, the two seasons he was with us, he somehow conspired to put the ball over from probably less than three yards. Yeah. How did he bounce back from that? I'm on the halfway line and I'm trying to shout to him, but because of the noise, because of uh, the fans and whatnot, he can't hear me. And Bully's about 10 or 15 yards in front of me and I'm screaming to Bully about getting him back, pulling back in, we need to sort him out. We need to keep his head on, really let him know there's another chance coming, yeah. he'll take that. Anyway, they end up scoring the, the second, don't they, Carver. And I always remember, and uh, like, it'll only be the lads on the pitch that, that'll know this. I remember one of their players walking back past Warby and he was putting his hands around his throat and he was going, you choked, you choked. Really? Yeah, yeah, yeah. And I was screaming over at this guy, telling him I'm gonna do all sorts to him. We came off and he kind of put it all on his shoulders there, Warps. I think he kind of felt like it was his fault that we lost the game, even though it's not. But that's just how yeah. he felt. That's He knew him, how important he was to, to the team, to the club. And I think he felt like he'd let everybody down. I'd gone for a, a pint after the Chorley game, just to kind of clear my mind a little bit. And I remember just kind of being sat there just thinking, might have gone. Might have gone that. We're pretty close, but we needed to win that game. I think they had, they had Bradford Park Avenue, yeah. 
and then they had Spennymoor the last two games and I looked at it and I thought, that team that we played earlier on in the day, I just can't see it. I can just see them doing a job and doing what they have to. But then the flip side of it, but then again, they might not. Yeah. So then we go from Chorley on a Saturday, we've got a chance to put it right straight away on the Monday. We've got Curzon at home. And we all know what happens in the last kind of five minutes, which we'll come to in a minute. In the stands, there's kind of lots of rumours and whispers and false starts. Does that translate to the pitch? A little bit, because you're trying to figure out what's going on. It didn't really alter anything for us. We just had to win the game yeah. and just kind of see what transpired elsewhere. Um, I remember there was a first, there was a first kind of cheer that went up and I'm thinking to myself on the pitch, what's that? I mean, we're 2-0 up at the time. Yeah. So for a second, your mind starts to wander and just start thinking, I wonder what's happening type of thing. Um, and there was a couple of other instances during the game, but yeah, pretty much none the wiser. I think those last five minutes, I think Chorley missed a penalty. Mm. Then there was the false rumour Spenny Moore had scored. And then what caused the eruption was the Spenny Moore goal, Glenn mm. Taylor. And for everyone else in the, and for Sam in the lead up to this, um, I messaged Glenn. Said I was having this <laughs> evening with Sam. You know, he thought <laughs> about it. And he, you know, he wasn't, wasn't bitter, not much. But what he did do for the evening, sent down a shirt from that game. Okay. So that is from the Chorley game. Um, and I said to Glenn that he will never, ever, ever have to buy a pint in Stockport. Ever again. <laughs> <laughs> you know, I don't want to say you won us the league, but you certainly gave us a big hand in winning the league. Definitely. Um, so that sets it all up for a final day game at Nuneaton. That's about as much as a, a banker of a game as you can get, isn't it? Yeah, pretty much. Yeah. Yeah, on and paper, yeah. How difficult was it? Because, you know, the club, it was the end of season awards that night. Mm. You know, in the background, there was a big party planned. Yeah. How difficult was it to kind of stick to the task in hand that you just need to go and win? I think the manager just kind of orchestrated all that. He kind of, he wouldn't let us lose sight of winning that game. Yeah. And then we talked about Matty at Chorley. And this is his actual shirt from the Nuneaton game. He gets his goal. Ash, a classic Ash Palmer back post header. Um, Matty gets the second goal, and you can kind of see the relief on his face, the celebration, that iconic celebration as he runs towards Patch with the camera. Yeah. And you think, we're turning up half time. We've done it now. I was just soaking it all up because I knew that the game was done. I knew we'd won the league. Obviously, the concentration's still there. We still do the, the same things that we've done all throughout the season. Um, but you knew that there was no way that they were going to pose any type of threat. I'd got a corner and I'm ready to just swing it in. <coughs> and some lad just jump, jumps over the barrier and he just comes and stands next to me with his camera <laughs> on <laughs> just to have a selfie. Yeah. And to be honest, half of me is thinking, it's pretty funny that. <laughs> but then half of me is thinking, just got just to gotta keep yeah. it professional. I remember we were all kind of camped. I think they might have had a corner or a throw-in uh, deep in our half. And I remember just thinking it's coming now. And the whistle goes and everybody kind of scatters then and does their own thing. And I'm facing, first of all, I'm facing the top end, which is the county end. And I see everyone running towards us. And then I turn around and if you remember, Stotty's loan had finished. Yeah, he was in the stand, wasn't he? He was in the stand with the yeah. fans. And I saw him, as I've turned back, I've seen him hurdle the stand. He's got half a pint in his hand <laughs> and he's running towards me. And I just thought, I don't want any part of him. Yeah. <laughs> so then I just started running off into the middle of the pitch with my arms out. Yeah. I did the old warby. I thought, right, I'm going to be warm for a few <laughs> seconds. Uh, and then I got to, got to the middle of the pitch. I think somebody got me this side. The fans from the top end had, had met me halfway too. And then it was just the celebrations and the pictures, the scenes. Is that iconic picture of you? Yeah. In the crowd, kind of leaning back, yelling. It's one of my favourite pictures. I think that's the big thing, just to be able to share it all. And no airs and graces about it at all. We're just all clinging on to each other yeah. and just enjoying it. We're back in the National League now. Um, we've got the white away shirt, we've got the black and green. Where does this rank in your favourite county shirts? 
Yeah, it's, it's up there. Popular one with fans. Yeah, it was popular with me too. Yeah. Uh, I really like that one. Um, games that stand out to me playing in that one was when we went to Wrexham early on in the season. Yeah. The way that the, the changing rooms are at the racecourse ground, we're right under the away stand. And somebody was asking for put such and such on the, on the music. Whoever was DJing at the time, stick this on. I remember the gaffer just, no, 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 no. Turn that off. Listen to that up there. Because where the ceiling is here, we can hear everything that's going on up there. And the county fans are just already, this is like what, 10 to 3? Yeah. Just going for it. And again, he just said, that's all you lot need. You don't need any music on here, just listen to that. How did life change? I know it was only a kind of a short window. Stock came in in January, season ended in March. Did life change at County in that window? Um, yeah, it did. I'd just come back into the team after I'd been, been out injured. We'd brought a couple of new faces in. I feel that if, if COVID probably doesn't come at the time that it does, when I've got back in the team, we're having a good run, we're looking like we're going to make a charge for a playoff spot. I think that I'll probably get a new, at least, a, well, yeah, I'll probably get a, yeah. a new year. Were you fur were the players furloughed? We were furloughed. Um, <laughs> and then from there, the club initially, for the lads that were coming to the end of the contract, when the contract expired, they, they then put out a retained and released list. Um, I think I was put in one where they were having new negotiations where me and Bully then were extended onto a short-term contract that would see us go to the start of the season type of thing and then kind of reassess it from there. So mm -hmm. we leave County, um, go to Macclesfield, ultimately play one friendly game for them, mm -hmm. albeit as captain. Yeah. Mac ceased to exist. Yep. Um, so that makes you a free agent? Yeah, and it did. Chicholi. Yeah, uh, I think everything that happened with. I <laughs> know, oh, don't judge me. <laughs> My hands were tied. I got a phone call from uh, Vermo and Andy Priest at Chorley, and they just kind of said, "We want you." There you go. And then, you fair to say that as the highlight of your time at Chorley, the Wigan game. Yeah. Yeah, so 2-0 yeah. down, Wade Wigan, and then you got win. Yeah. Go and win 3-2. Yeah. Get to the fourth round. Was it fourth round? Yeah, they did, yeah. yeah. But yeah, th I think that one, that Wigan game was my last game for Chorley. And I, because I only signed a short-term thing with Chorley, um, Curzon came back in and they wanted to take me back over there. And obviously, Bully was there, Daz was there, yeah. Alex Curran was there. Um, I knew that Cowan wanted to go there too and I thought to myself, I thought if we can kind of mesh that together we can make a fist of it and we can do something and maybe look at building. So I ended up um, taking up that offer, left Chorley after the Wigan game and yeah and then obviously it kicked in yeah. with Covid so I, I'd gone back to Curzon and I played a handful of games and then it, it got cut short. So which takes us up to summer just gone and the season we're in now. Mm -hmm. Another new club, Harvey Celtic. Yep. In the Conference North again. Yep. Um, reasonable start and then, and then what happens? I go up for a header against Chester in the second game of the season and a collision with the centre half. I fracture my skull, fracture my eye sockets, break my nose multiple times, split the roof of my mouth, fracture my jaw. Yeah, how long are you out for? Um, at least a new year. So I think it'll be a mask cover the forehead. Yeah. Uh, Is that permanent? And the nose. Um, they've not said, I think it all comes down to what I'm comfortable with. Yeah. Um, I've played with one of those masks on before and they're not, they're not really pleasant. They restrict you quite a lot in terms of your vision when you're looking down and things like that. Um, so just going to play it by ear and, and see, see what's what, but I'm hoping that I'm robust enough yeah. to... Another few years? Well, loads left yeah. in the tank, yeah. Well, that takes us through, you know, your early days, through your career, through to Farsley. You know, I think we'll probably speak to everyone here that it's been an absolute pleasure having you here.
Thank you very much. Cheers, mate. Thank you. Brilliant, mate.